Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined, as always, by my wonderful co hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. But much more importantly, today we are joined by Mr. Stephen Nowalski, uh, CEO, and Patrick O'Sullivan, Chief Bitcoin Officer, CBO of Aussie baseball team Perth Heat. Uh, how are both you guys doing today? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, thanks for having us on. Uh, really excited for the chat. Yeah, let's go. Nice. Okay, let's do it. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, anyone who uh, has any idea who you guys are or who Perth Heat are uh, will know that there's a lot of firsts going on here. So you're the first sports team to uh, run on a Bitcoin standard uh, and uh, believe the first organization to have a chief Bitcoin officer, a CBO, uh, as far as I'm aware, and probably as far as you guys are aware, unless that's changed. Um, so I guess if you guys could give us a sort of a basic idea of what the organization being on a Bitcoin standard actually consists of, um, that would be appreciated for anyone kind of listening in who has no idea what's going on. Um, and then I guess just tell us what inspired this idea in the first place. Yeah, cool. Maybe I'll start off with what we're doing at the moment, then Patrick can go into yeah you know, what inspires us. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll put an asterisk or a, a, a marker down early to say that, uh, you know, for me, uh, our chief Bitcoin officer, um, who is the first of its type in, in, in the world, is the uh, is the architect of this. Uh, you know, Patrick uh, Patrick's work with with, with our organisation has just been phenomenal. Um, and, and and also, you know, with myself, um, you know, we, we look at CIS uh, suite structures, you know, in organisations, and you know, generally uh, it's the CEO up here, uh, and really the CBO is not on that uh, page until we've introduced it. Um, down, down, down the line into the future, that's going to change. And I think you know, the CBO is going to stand above the CEO. Um, you know, that's how quickly this, this is going to uh, you know, change the way uh, boardrooms and executive uh, management teams will look um, you know, into, into the future. So, you know, what do we do? We're pretty much everything. Uh, and if we're not doing something, we'd, we'd like to know, you know from the Bitcoin community uh, as, as to how we can implement Bitcoin into our, into our everyday uh, organization. So payments now, uh, Bitcoin is the standard. We've you know, completely reversed what's happened in world sport with players going uh, to the management and asking to be paid in Bitcoin. Uh, us as an organization now, the Perth are saying Bitcoin is the default payment and then we'll work backwards from there. So that goes across the board with uh, players, staff, um, yeah, additional um, mem members of, uh, of management throughout, throughout the team. Uh, yeah, we accept uh, Bitcoin payments throughout the ballpark already. Uh, we started that uh, late last year. So you can come to the ballpark, you can buy a hot dog, you can buy a beer, you can buy uh, merchandise, you can buy tickets, you know, with Bitcoin, uh, which, which is fantastic. Um, you know, obviously, in terms of you know, payments uh, internationally, we're, you know, accepting Bitcoin is so much easier than uh, going through a SWIFT code and you know, the, the Fiat legacy system, which is just an absolute nightmare. Um, so, you know, taking payments in Bitcoin, um, you know, cross borders, uh, what we'll do in terms of integrating with the Lightning Network um, within our season uh, will be revolutionary. And you'll see some announcements uh, with that in the coming, uh, probably in the coming week, which would be pretty exciting as to how we'll increase and improve the fan experience globally, uh, because this is no longer a story about just taking Bitcoin payments and saying, oh, fantastic. Uh, there's, there's so many more layers to uh, what we'll do and how we'll excite fans um, around the world and you know, in, in, interact with your cell phone and um, you know, the Lightning Network, which is pretty cool. Um, it's just awesome to see how quickly the advancements in technologies and the tools are changing. Um, it's almost weekly um, and, and trying to keep up with them in some ways is, is a challenge. Um, so, yeah, I th think Bitcoin, uh, think Perth, Perth Eat, and uh, I think we've said on a couple of... Uh, different chats we've had and the big announcement which will be when we launch our uh, Bitcoin mining at the ballpark in the coming months prior to uh, the season starting in October. Um, we'll, we'll show the world what is possible by mining you know, Bitcoin at a sports venue and how that can benefit the community. Um, that's really exciting. Um, you know, we've had support from the government here in Western Australia. Uh, we'll have some solar uh, up at the, uh, the ballpark which will power the uh, the Bitcoin mining, and yeah, this this will be a great test case for the world to show, um, yeah, the power of Bitcoin mining, um, an education on Bitcoin mining, and how the community benefits from it as well. So, uh, yeah, really excited to to bring that project together. It's uh, there's been a lot of work involved with it, but uh, yeah, the benefits of it will be just 
phenomenal for the network. It's uh, it's going to be pretty cool. I guess a quick question, like when, when you guys uh, accept Bitcoin inside of the stadium, um, is that like uh, Lightning as well as uh, on-chain or is it just on-chain or just is it both? No, it's on the Lightning network. So, um, and, and then it's, it's pretty cool to see the people that you're introducing to it that, or even if they're standing in line, and you know the person in front of them make, making that bitcoin payment and them understanding how it works and how simple it is yeah and that's you know a great, great part of the whole education and bringing everything into a sports venue is is how quickly you can see people adapting and understanding to uh what bitcoin is about and you know all these things i've heard and you know seeing it come into practice in a lot of ways because you can walk down you know the, the main mall in uh, the city of Perth and ask someone about Bitcoin. I go, oh, sorry, Mark, I don't have you know, 20,000 US to buy a coin. I, 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 I can't do it. You scratch your head, yeah. But then when you see them, uh, you know, similar sorts of people in line understand that they can make a payment there and you need, you know, you know, five to ten dollars, whatever it may be, it starts the education in a very, very simple uh, manner, which is great. We don't have to overcomplicate it sometimes, which I think we get uh, according to that trap you know, of, of talking about Bitcoin. Yeah, at a level which sometimes just doesn't uh, um, resonate with the non-Bitcoiner. Um, and just by having something as simple as uh, lightning payments in the ballpark and people understanding they can purchase immediately um, you know, or, or their, their transaction will be final um, there and then uh, is, is, is pretty cool. Um, for, the, for the mining operation that you guys are going to launch at the stadium, um, how many miners are we talking about? Is this going to be like a huge mining operation or, or just a few uh, Bitcoin miners? Oh, no, we've got Chad at, uh, at Riot covered. We're going to have a data center bigger than the one at Winston. It's not just joking. Uh, we'll just be a couple. Uh, yeah, look, it's, 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 it's not about um, you know, creating the biggest yeah, data center in, in the Southern Hemisphere or anything like that. It's, it's an education. It's, it's to, if you... Jump, jump on the you know, you, you, uh, your, your computer and type in Bitcoin mining air, and you'll see these images of these huge data centers, and you'll go, "Shit, Jesus Christ, that looks scary." And and suddenly people will, you know, link it to the uh, the publicity about the Bitcoin mining is bad for the community, and I'll just look at the picture and go, "Yeah, that that shit looks bad." Um, if we can enable the average uh, baseball fan to come in, touch, feel, look, see, and understand it. There's the education right there and then. Oh, okay. Is that, is, is, that, is that what Bitcoin mining is? Right. It's just a computer plugged into a bit of power. Right. Okay. That's how, how it all comes together in terms of the algorithms. Got it. Understood. So much easier. Yeah. Um, we're not, yeah, looking to create a, a, a data center that's going to, yeah, um, take, take on the world or anything like that. It's, it comes back to simple education. Yeah. Using solar power is going to be a, a good idea for sure, right? Like it obviously helps use energy that you're getting for free essentially to, to mine the Bitcoin. And also it kind of, again, shows people there's a green side to the Bitcoin side of things as well. Um, yeah, but, yeah, spot on. And look, it, 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 is it going to be the perfect setup? No, far from it. But what it is, it's, it is the first project effectively where we've got government support in terms of what we're doing. And this is saying to the world, here is a government in Western Australia um, with a sports team in effectively a private setting, uh, or sorry, a, a public setting, and they're mining Bitcoin. And no, there's, no, there's nothing harmful about this. They're working off a couple of uh, solar panels. It's returning some uh, revenue back to the community. And anything that the Bitcoin mining generates will go back into the community and we'll have a presentation there with a junior baseball team and presenting with bats or balls or uh, whatever it may be that that community club requires. Um, and here it is, it's as a pilot project saying to the world, this is what's possible. How many sports venues are there in the world? Gosh, you know, like, you, I don't, how, how long will that take to, uh, to, to calculate? Yeah, but there's so many opportunities of how Bitcoin, you know, can be, uh, can be injected into these, uh, in, in, into these arenas um, as a benefit for the local community. And yeah, we're happy to say, we're going to start the project. Is it going to be perfect on November 1? No, but is it going to be a really, really good test case and pilot project as to how can we improve it and how others can uh, follow? Absolutely. And that's what's most exciting is that we're going to open the eyes to the world as to the, uh, the possibilities of Bitcoin mining at sports venues. 
I know one thing. So I'm a fan of uh, Forest Green here in the UK. That's a football mm. team. They're known as like the greenest team in the in the world, uh, and they've used like solar power for the stadium. And I, when I go, there's like you know, there's all sorts of different things like bamboo sport kits and things. Uh, and that has brought them uh, a lot of fans, like internationally. So when if you go, you see people coming from mm. France and all sorts of countries because of that aspect of them being green. Right? They 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 were. I think actually got promoted but yeah they were like a league two team league one now um so that was kind of the main reason have you guys seen with you guys becoming the bitcoin team and obviously having everything that goes on around that and the publicity around that um has, have you seen that increase um like membership numbers and interest in the team at all or, or has it been like, has it made much of an impact yet so far or, or is that something to, still to come that's been crazy yeah it's been great uh globally what we did um, in four months of merchandise sales, uh, post the announcement in November is the equivalent of three years of international sales online. Um, you know, with the Bitcoin conference in Miami and the, you know, the jerseys were selling out like hotcakes. It was pretty awesome walking around uh, the convention center and seeing our jersey on, you know, Bitcoiners, you know, over the course of the three days or walking throughout the streets of Miami and seeing it, yeah, um, pop up or people wearing our hats. So, now the, the interest in the team has, has, been, uh, has been overwhelming. It's been beautiful. Um, but in a lot of ways, our, our journey in terms of what we're going to uh, roll out hasn't started. And that's what's really exciting in the way that we can influence the community um, and onboard masses uh, by what we do at the ballpark, by being community leaders um, on the education of Bitcoin and its benefits uh, and the benefits of operating on a Bitcoin standard. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in um, the idea for this because I remember reading the Bitcoin magazine article um and basically it kind of, you know, it was like the, the, the idea occurred and, and you're already into Bitcoin and Patrick was into Bitcoin. And then it was kind of like a discussion with the board, which I want to ask you about as well. But for, for now, I guess, like you hear about the different stories about, I don't know, Mr. Olympia competition. And it was because of like Olympia beers, what they were drinking when they were having a chat, whatever. Are there any kind of interesting stories around how that happened? Or is it more of like a gradual thing where you're like, actually, we should just do this. And then it kind of, you know, cascades. Like how, what's the story behind the actual idea? And is there anything interesting going on there? Uh, I, I would say the interesting part is exactly how you laid it out. I mean, it, it was fairly straightforward and simple in a, a conversation, which should give hope to a lot of Bitcoiners out there who are interested in, you know, just having conversations about Bitcoin, right? It happens, it enters your life, uh, it starts to change the way that you think and the way that you act, and you feel that, uh, you know, pretty much everything you do, as soon as you get into it and you get, get started down the rabbit hole, you start having these conversations. And one little conversation uh, that I had with Steve completely changed the course of, uh, well, the, the 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 network at least on our end and our lives from that conversation this ability to really i guess steve was really quick to understand that uh, see some of the key things with bitcoin and understand some of the problems uh, that it was solving uh, and what the technology was meant to do and um through conversations like that it's it's not hard really to put it together once you see that bitcoin is beneficial at an individual level it's not really hard to piece it together that um, it can be beneficial for a group right a group is just a, a selection of individuals who are pointed at, at a common goal um, and you know through the course of uh, a number of months and just having more and more conversations realize that this is uh, probably an ideal space an ideal opportunity an organization just the way that it is structured the way that the league is structured here in australia the way that the team um, has ownership of over all of the media all of the rights all of those things there's a lot more freedom here um, with just how things are set up that we could actually make a go at it uh, and then just months and months of sort of trying to figure out okay why you know we're not rocket scientists why hasn't anybody done this before <laughs> uh, what 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 pitfalls are there and then sort of you know even to a point of maybe perhaps to our own detriment, overthinking it a little bit of being like, okay, well, if no one has done this before, surely there's limitations that we're not thinking of. Surely there's steps that we haven't uh, considered that other smart people have. Um, and as it turns out, uh, at least up until this point, the, the, that just hasn't been the case. Um, and, you know, we, we went through the process of orange pilling the board and bringing those uh, members along with us and really showing the benefits of what Bitcoin um, can do for the organization. And those, you know, that's a completely different topic. It's a long conversation um, and it's not easy. And I'm sort of fast forwarding over months of these things, but it all starts from a simple conversation of this is how I think Bitcoin can help. And this is how uh, some of the problems that you are seeing in the world that maybe you can't put your finger on, um, how those can be drawn back to, uh, to things that Bitcoin solves. So really, it's just a, it's a simple conversation that morphs into um, how can I help? You know, I don't have... I don't have technical skills. I'm not going to code the thing that's going to change the world. Um, but I do have the ability to explain in a fairly consistent and uh, reliable manner exactly why this is going to revolutionize the world. What's the response been from like, like the players and the staff and all that that have been receiving their salary? And um, how has the league responded? 
Um, are there other teams in the league that have maybe kind of copied or followed your guys' lead and done something similar? Or are you guys pretty much pioneering this? I think it's fair to say we're, we're pioneering this, but uh, while, while, while we're pioneering, the Australian Baseball League and their management team are, are watching closely. So um, a, a few weeks ago, the head of their marketing department sat in on one of our meetings, which was which was awesome. Um, and you know, I wanted to learn and understand how potentially they could maybe you know, Im implement something in, in one of the rounds this season. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're certainly, um, I think, sitting back and watching with, with great interest as to how this plays out um, for our organisation, which is great. Um, they certainly haven't uh, put any roadblocks um, in front of us, uh, which shows that they're a progressive um, organisation. Um, I, th I think if you can, uh, you look at the major leagues in the world and uh, maybe if we re reference you know, the Premier League you know, for football, uh, the NFL, American football, uh, MLB, uh, you know, there's a lot of red tape there. Um, we, we, this is one of the great benefits we've got is that we don't have the red tape of these big organ uh, these big sports leagues, these um, you know, teams that uh, may need the, uh, all 32 owners to, to buy into an idea or in, in, into a process to agree to, to, to allow it. So um, we haven't had any red tape from the Australian Baseball League. They've been supportive. Our players have been fantastic. Um, you know, really, we couldn't speak highly enough of their, uh, their reaction uh, to this announcement. Um, but it shouldn't be surprising either. I think we've got a really, really intelligent uh, you know, group of athletes. Um, athletes understand uh, low time preference, um, but they also understand um, you know, the opportunity in front of us from with, with our organisation. Um, and you know, they've just wanted to continue to learn. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm really proud of the reaction we've had from our players. Um, you know, since the announcement and you know, I, I guess everyone throughout the organization in how, the, how they've embraced it. So it's, it's been, um, it's been yeah, re really touching in some ways because uh, as Patrick said, sometimes you, in, in the process of launching, you overthink it and uh, maybe you think of you know, reasons why uh, this may not be possible. But uh, you know, since we've launched, it's just been awesome to see the reaction from, uh, from everyone within the organization. You know, we tend to think of Bitcoin and all the, you know, um, positives and pros that it can bring. And, but as a business, I assume, you know, having listened to everything you've explained and narrated, I, as a business, I assume that you hold some Bitcoin in your balance sheet. How do you as a business get to deal with the volatility? You know, I assume that not all, your, all of your business associates will, you know, obviously take payments in Bitcoin, but you know, how do you deal, do you keep some of them despite we're in a Bitcoin peer market, we might be, it might, you know, stay for a very long time. So how do you deal with the volatility and, you know, all of that? Uh, yeah, I would say just so I guess it's clear, uh, if it wasn't made clear earlier, that when we talk about operating on a Bitcoin standard, it is everything uh, that you could possibly think of uh, with Bitcoin, right? That was one of the things when we originally started this project was like, we're not going to go, it's not going to be just another announcement of payments, it's not going to be just another announcement of uh, keep a, a little bit on the corporate uh, balance sheet. Uh, it's going to be all in on Bitcoin. That's it. All the chips on the table pushed into Bitcoin because that is what we wanted to see. Right? We've been waiting for a long time, at least if you've been a Bitcoin or for a long time, you've been waiting. I have personally been waiting for a company to just say, fuck it, let's go. We're going all in. We're not messing around. We're not, uh, you know, going to uh, dip a toe in. It's going to be everything Bitcoin. So when you say, yeah, do, do we hold Bitcoin on the balance sheet? Yes, uh, the entire balance sheet um, that, that is not barred in, in fiat is in Bitcoin, right? That the, the strategy is long term. We know uh, through, you know, just the the conviction that has been built up um, in the game theory and Bitcoin and what it can do. And uh, we know that in the long term, this puts us in a better position to be successful as a baseball uh, team, as an organization. So it is all in on Bitcoin. Uh, is there volatility? Yes. Do you have to plan for this stuff? Uh, absolutely. Um, is that going to be the case forever? No. Um, so yes, there are those things. And that, that comes through, I guess that speaks to the education within the organization, right? You can't just spring this on the organization and say, Hey, uh, everybody, we should, uh, we should just change everything to Bitcoin, um, at $60,000 and then just go, Oh, it didn't work. You know, we, everybody just lost 80% of their money. The, the corporation is going to go completely bunk. It's all fucked. Like that would obviously not be great, um, which is why it took so long to make sure that there was conviction behind the board and that they understood that this is, these are the reasons why it's going to be successful. These are the pitfalls. Um, and as long as you're honest and upfront 
I think as soon as people get the idea, which, you know, it, it may take, it's a complex system, right? The, the meme going around right now, Bitcoin Twitter, is that it's 100 hours to even scratch the surface of understanding just how the network works, how it operates, how it functions. Um, once you get past those 100 hours, you've only just begun. Um, so it really is about getting that education, finding the right places to do that and the right content to do that for the audience that you are talking to. But as soon as we were able to get the key contributors on board, the key uh, stakeholders and decision makers, this really was... I guess it's a test case, right? Like we didn't know that it was going to drop that much. We, we, we anticipated that the volatility would be there as it has been in the past, right? There's lots of misconceptions about what Bitcoin is. And that's one of the beautiful parts about an 80% drop. It's a beautiful part about the Bitcoin community in general. It's like uh, you come up with an assumption for your position um, and you come up with conviction for that position. And then a bear market will completely wipe it out. You know, the money printer go burr. Uh, narrative around Bitcoin and why it has gone up and it's going to be an inflation uh, hedge, uh, that goes completely down the toilet, right? Well, you have to ask yourself, well, why? What happened? Why was I wrong? If you're objective about things, what changes in the narrative? And the beautiful part about a bear market is it allows Bitcoiners to do that and to step back and go, okay, what, what were we missing? What didn't we see? And every time that happens, that Bitcoin doesn't die, the narrative sharpens, right? The arguments get better. The stories that you can bring on new people with get only more informed. So that's exactly what's going to happen in this. The, the narrative is going to get better. It's going to get stronger and eventually we'll bounce back even better than we were before. And we're positioned in a spot because we have put our hand up to say we're ready to really hold up a mirror to the Bitcoin network and say, this is the best that Bitcoin has to offer. These are the things that we can do and, and these are the benefits that the Bitcoin network can offer an organization. Um, and by putting our hand up, we're saying, uh, if you have ideas, come to us. If you have suggestions, come to us. The talent in the Bitcoin space is, uh, as you guys know, is, is pretty wild. It's, uh, you know, some of the top thinkers um, in the world are working on this because of the incentives, because of the opportunity that is here. And because it's open source, we can tap into that. Um, and that makes a huge difference in how we run the business. Um, I'm not sure how it works in baseball. And I'm a more of a football person and um, soccer. If that's what you're familiar with. I don't know how player transfers do work. In baseball, you know, in football, you have to sign players, you know, discuss, negotiate, salaries, and all, all that stuff. I think in uh, uh, I think in American football, you have to. It's like you know, at the end of the season, you know, players get drafted and all of that. So, um, having you know, being very a very Bitcoin centric organization, have you had problems trying to you know negotiate, you know, with trying to get new talent into your team, and you know, having to have this conversation? Does it get awkward? Does it get weird? You know, say, hey, we're not going to pay you regularly. Yeah. They used to, you know, fuck that. They're giving you freedom, Bitcoin. And how does the conversation, you know, usually go? Has that been an issue when trying to get a new talent on board? No, it's been the, the exact opposite, actually. So we, we've got a, a strong relationship with the Tampa Bay Rays who are in the MLB. Um, and they send us over their best prospects each Australian summer. So I was up in Florida at the start of February and I was up at the train, uh, spring training facility. Um, and some of the boys that had played for us in previous uh, years sprinted towards me and were like, Steve, why didn't you do this two years ago? Why didn't you take the Bitcoin standard back in uh, 2020 when we were there? We would have loved to have been part of this journey with your organisation. Um, and that's just one example of, of many where you know, we've had people uh, you know, reach out to us and um, you know, want to be part of something different, want to be part of something special, want to be part of... Um, an, an organisation which is making change for the better um, across the world. So, um, yeah, the inquiries that we get from players worldwide, uh, we haven't had any negative feedback in regards to, um, you know, our, our, our position moving forward with Bitcoin. Um, but again, yeah, you know, it's a discussion which, you know, it, it, if, if required, we'll talk them through it. And I'm sure by the end of that conversation, they'll understand there won't be any, uh, any problem moving forward. But... Uh, no, the, uh, in, in terms of recruitment, we've just signed a World Series champion by the name of Josh Reddick um, and really looking forward to seeing him arrive in Perth uh, yeah, in, in October. So it uh, certainly hasn't, uh, hasn't slowed us down at all. Uh, yeah, I like Jerry. I mean, I'm, I'm big into lots of sports, but I think baseball is one of the only ones I really don't know anything about. But hey, Perth Heat's already my team, boys. So you've already uh, you've already persuaded yeah, me no, <laughs> to be a fan. Um, yeah, yeah, just oh. it, it, it's a pretty cool sport to watch uh, live. If, if, if look up, I had not watched a baseball game from start to finish before I took the uh, before I took the role of chief executive. Um, yeah, watched a couple of games on TV and. Um, 
admittedly falling asleep at different stages of the game. But you come out to the ballpark and it's more about a day coming out with friends or mates and you know, working your way through the menu, having a couple of beers and, and drifting in and out of a game. Uh, it's not like, I say, a football game when you're in, you know, engrossed in it for 90 minutes and uh, you know every kick, every tackle means something. Um, yeah, a, a, the pace of the baseball game is, 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 is pretty chilled. Um, and, it, and it's a great way just to uh, watch sport without um, all the distractions going on around it. So, um, yeah, it's, if, you, if you're going to watch a baseball game, try to get to a ballpark and watch it live um, as opposed to uh, maybe on the, on the box initially. Unlike Jerry and Lawrence, I've been a baseball fan for most of my life. Uh, oh, here we I'm go. actually pretty ignorant that uh, baseball was so popular in Australia. Um, how, how many different teams are there in Australia? Well, it's an international competition, the Australian Baseball League. There's eight teams in it. Uh, there's one from Korea, there's one from New Zealand, and there's six from Australia. Um, it's one of the best winter leagues in the world. So as I said, we've you know, got the association with the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, 32 years of Perth Heat has been an organisation. We've had 30 players go on to play Major League Baseball. Um, so we, it's effectively one per year from our organisation making it through uh, to the big leagues. Um, I don't know any other team in world sport that, uh, that has such a a strong uh, pathway into the uh, into their best you know, competition in the world. So um, we're really, really proud of the fact that uh, we're good at producing baseballers, we're brilliant at winning championships, and now we're setting the, uh, the standard in terms of operating on a Bitcoin standard. But uh, yeah, um, Graham Lloyd, who played for us, uh, uh, the Perth Heat won uh, World Series with the New York Yankees in 96 and 98. Liam Hendricks, uh, currently with the Chicago White Sox, uh, MLB reliever of the year, the last two years, ex Perth Heat. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a really good uh, spread of Perth Heat players throughout Major League Baseball. Um, and, and, and the competitions are a really high standard. I grew up in, in, the, in the US and I, I was a Giants fan for most of my life, a San Francisco Giants fan. Um, I lived in Sacramento. They have the, the River Cats, which is like a minor league team. Uh, does players go to the MLB and turn pro? Yeah, absolutely. So we just had uh, BJ Cook, who was signed by the uh, Oakland A's, um, and yeah, he'll he'll start uh, working his way up through through the minor leagues. Uh, we've got a couple of other players at, uh, at various teams uh, throughout uh, the you know, the minor leagues as well. So there's uh, Josh Hendrickson, there's Alex Hall, there's Ulrich Biaski. There's actually a really cool story with Alex Hall uh, two weeks ago, where you now he got promoted from the uh, the minor leagues from High A and. Uh, made it all the way to the majors. Had a couple of COVID uh, issues with their catchers, and uh, you know, suddenly he was propelled from uh, from high A into the major leagues, which was very very cool. Um, and it, it was nice because he's had, I, I guess, a, a tough start to the season um, with our season being shut down last year. The boys uh, never never got uh, the exposure of the ABL that they needed to get themselves uh, ready for the start of uh, spring training in the, in the US. So uh, yeah, for him to go through and have that experience was awesome. So yeah, we got players scattered throughout the minor leagues, yeah, working their way up. Uh, back into, yeah, you know, uh, to try and get uh, the opportunity to play major league. So, yeah, we think probably by the end of the year, um, it's 30 players, that record at the moment, that could probably push maybe 32 or 33. There's there's two or three knocking on the door at the moment, which is uh, which is pretty cool. I guess dial back the conversation a little bit. When it comes to you guys, and you said obviously talking about Bitcoin and things like that, like Patrick, were you uh, involved in the organization in another capacity before you became CBO or were you guys friends or how, how did you guys... How did that all happen? Like, uh, that'd be interesting. Yeah, no, no, not involved at all, um, really. Uh, and the idea was just as soon as as soon as we uh, the possibility came up that this was going to be a thing, and you start to have those initial conversations with the the the, the people that are involved um, in deciding whether or not this is going to be a reality. Um, you you quickly realize just how much work there is out there, um, and the infrastructure and all of the services around Bitcoin um, has come a, a you know an extremely long way uh, in the past couple of years and things have gotten significantly easier, but it is still a field where things are changing weekly. You know, the, the way that we are going to do things uh, now is different than the way that we're going to do things 30 days from now and 90 days from now. Uh, and it became clear that someone just needed to be on top of that to be able to filter back the information that was going to really move the needle, what we needed to change, what we needed to look at, uh, communication with some of, the, um, some of the key companies that we were going to use to be able to pull this off. Uh, because it became apparent that really uh, eventually that we would never have just a complete package ready to go, right? We're the first ones to do it. Uh, we were happy to stumble along and go through that process and then report back to the community. But uh, we, we were never going to get that this uh, this service or this uh, particular company or these things don't just tick all the boxes. We were going to have to come up with a Frankenstein version of it. Um, and really the role 
of CBO that was sort of crafted out of that was initially in education and setting up the systems that were going to allow these things to make it happen because there are, you know, it's it's easy to sit here and talk about it now um, after the work that we put in to actually make this a reality. Uh, but behind the scenes, uh, there's a tremendous amount of things that are just not, you know, in reality, just not ready for prime time. It's not like a plug and play solution for every company can do this. Every small business can do this. Uh, you know, we don't have an, an army of uh, lawyers and accountants at the, the company that can just full time stop what they're doing and sort of get to work on this. And uh, the solutions just aren't there, right? The tax regulations are horrendous still. Um, they're really backwards. Uh, the payment of players and exactly how that was going to happen and how it was going to be facilitated and uh, where were the wallets going to come from and who was going to tell the players about these wallets and how were they going to learn about these things and uh, with staff and then with payments and then with just custodial, like how are we going to actually hold on the balance sheet? How are you going to hold the Bitcoin? Uh, what is the key setup going to be? What is the uh, security going to be around that? Who's going to have access to those things? Just tons and tons and tons of questions <laughs> where you start with like, oh, yeah, this is going to be a great idea. And then you quickly realize that um, there's a, a number of boxes to check. And it just naturally worked out that I could gravitate and fill that role um, and switch from sort of educating and orange pilling to maybe being the one on the front line to to sort of help lead this thing and uh, and just communicate with all of the different people that we are now in constant communication with to try and make this thing as good as possible because we realize, which is something that the the board was really interested in, um, is to take advantage of the fact that we are really a, a test pilot case. And there's a lot of eyeballs on us outside the organization, but also from within it. You know, the owners um, have businesses uh, ranging in a wide variety of things with lots and lots of capital um, that th they're interested in to see, well, how, how is this going to work? How is this going to be accepted? How is it? How can I use this not just for the organization, but outside of it in our other businesses? Is this something that is really on the front foot? Like, how is the media going to perceive these things? Um, and that was 100% a strategy on, on our part, knowing that if you're stepping into the business now, if you're stepping into the Bitcoin space now as a company, uh, you really just can't step in and, and not participate. You really, you, you, you have to, almost by default, because of the questions in the media that you will receive, you have to have a forward-facing education component of the business. And really, it's almost branched off into two separate businesses. You know, Steve and I are on so many of these Zoom calls with different organizations that have questions. How, how did you do this? How did you deal with X, Y, and Z? Um, so that, that has sort of morphed in the role now that everything is at least you know, the wheels are on the wagon and it's moving forward um, in some capacity um, that now the role has sort of shifted into, well, uh, how can we be advantageous or how can we show other people and use the experience that we have to leverage other companies getting into the space and uh, to, you know, to report back to the companies that are helping us make it all possible. Because I, I know, and BitRefill is not, not one, but I know companies in the crypto space, so like crypto or Bitcoin companies that don't, <laughs> don't, don't or can't pay most of their employees in, in crypto or Bitcoin. So it's a tough thing to do even for companies literally in the space. Um, so I was thinking things like, well, you know, you make you decide to make this change, <clears throat> but then you've got accounting software, right? Say you use accounting software, like suddenly <laughs> that may not be completely compatible. Like say you use zero or whatever, like there's suddenly a workaround you've got to do with, with that, right? Just to be able to go, okay, we bring the money in here, let me pay that. And then I was thinking, you know, it sounds to me like you guys hold, yeah, mainly Bitcoin. Obviously, you have some fiat for when you accept fiat and, and things like that, um, which seems practical. Um, but also, I was thinking if you're trying to go 100% Bitcoin on the balance sheet, then you're going to have to do coin payments, I guess, but like a reverse version where you automatically sell to Bitcoin. And there's, there's so many. And then obviously, when you do that, there's the tax of when you've done that event. And, you know, you, you see, you get tax on the Bitcoin as income, and then you get tax potentially on it with capital gains. If it then is worth a different value at the end of the year. So there's all these different things you have to worry about. Um, so yeah, I can see, uh, yeah, man, you got, a, you got a job cut out for you. That's for sure. <laughs> you're, you're, you just sounded like my brain for the last uh, 12 months. Like you start to, you, you, you figure out one thing and then you're like, oh no, this is going to be way worse because I have to do these other 10 <laughs> things. But you know, the, the thing that we kept coming back to was that if it's not us doing this, someone else has to do it. So it's like, this is what we can do. This is the position that we are able to be in. Um, and this is how the needle gets moved. And like I said, everybody can bring their own skills um, to Bitcoin. Um, and we just so happen to be the ones in this position. And it's like, well, uh, let's try. <laughs> let's try and do the work. And let's try and have those conversations with the people like Zero, because those changes aren't going to happen um, unless, you know, unless you be the squeaky wheel, unless you say, uh, we want this change. Like, just uh, uh, imagine you know, just, just the, just the, the merchandise that we have or the, the different vendors that we have, those, that's now every conversation 
is begins with Bitcoin of, uh, you know, there's an issue uh, either through acceptance or through payments or through, um, you know, some websites can't process it at all for tickets for the actual game. So now you have to go through and, and deal with the companies that are doing our payments versus the companies that uh, the tickets are actually on. It just turns into this whole thing. But, you know, that's what we signed up for and, and, and happy to do it in the hopes that uh, this will be a, like I said, a positive reflection on what is possible. And it shows the demand is not there just from the individuals. It's not there just from the large corporations like your uh, Teslas or your micro strategies. But this can actually be workable in a solution in, in a system that is far smaller and, and the benefits can be uh, put on display. Um, and, and that's the whole goal, really. Sorry, so I was thinking as, you know, Lawrence was saying a bunch of things. I was Before the interview started, I was like, what does a Bitcoin chief Bitcoin officer actually do? So I was thinking, like, what's your day-to-day -day routine? And, and listen to Lawrence say a bunch of things like, wow, like, there is a you know, whole you know, shitload of stuff to actually do. So it got, it got me thinking that has your job gotten easier over time or has it gotten you know, more and more complicated and, you know, demanding in several ways? And do you feel like it will get, I, I, I'm, I'm sure you're thinking maybe one day, you know, you just sit back and relax and think, you know, everything's going so smoothly, you know, accounting's well taken care of and, you know, Bitcoin is accepted everywhere. And now you don't have to think about, you know, too much, you know, you know shit. So does it get easier, you know, as, as you know, in your experience? I am I am desperately hoping that that day comes, right? And if the if the game theory plays off and all of the models work the, in our heads, then yes, it will get easier. Um, but to say that now would be a lie. Uh, it certainly gets it gets more complicated because, like you say, one solution that you have for a certain problem will just lead on to other things. But really, the the ma the, the majority of the work still is deciding and being the filtration for uh, how much technical information is passed on to the team that they need to know for you know what solution X is going to do to problem Y. You know, just sort of connecting the dots in, inside of the organization to say, uh, maybe we don't need to move on this now because that problem will, uh, you know, open us up to another whole can of worms that we can't. So it really, it's like a filtration process to determine just how technical we're going to get with people that, that may not need to understand the, the, the nuts and bolts of, of the network and just how it operates versus what, what, what it means to the business itself. So it really is that you know, I'm sort of like a translator um, at the moment, but also, uh, you know, doing that with not only the companies that are trying to help us out and the solutions that we're trying to get and some of the bespoke things that we are doing just in-house um, but then even in the organization you know there's constant questions there's there's people get interested and uh, around the water cooler there's people that ask questions and and you know there goes an hour orange pilling uh, you know somebody at the the water cooler because they're talking to their uncle and they, they you know they're having issues with volatility or they're having issues with their wallets or payment hasn't gone through or they think you know they've sent funds somewhere that shouldn't have gone it's just uh, you know it's constant it's constant education and it's constant work and uh, you know it's it's uh, really fun to be a part of uh, even though there's lots and lots to be done what about like uh, the bitcoin company have they reached out to you guys to like be sponsors, put their logo in the stadium, uh, sponsor the seventh inning stretch, or things like that? Have you guys had a good response from companies in the Bitcoin industry? Uh, yeah, the, the the response from the community has been amazing. Uh, I think the response from Bitcoin companies uh, has been, you know, we we have been well received um, in the space, uh, but it would be. Uh, sort of without giving away too many details about future announcements that are coming up and, and what's being worked on behind the scenes. Uh, there's a lot happening uh, in that space. Uh, but really, we are trying to, like I mentioned, and this is something that we just re keep repeating inside of the organization to remember what we're trying to do is we're trying to play the long game, right? The, the, the Perth Heat, the organization as a baseball team, has got 32 years of proof of work inside of the community trying to do what is right. Uh, and the last thing that we want to do is come out and um, endorse products or endorse services that we are, number one, not using ourselves uh, because we want to be a place that you can send grandma to the ball game and she's not going to go home with some shit coin, um, you know, that's going to scam out and then she's going to get rug pulled on, which is, it's, it's, you know, it is, it's, it's quite funny to think about that, but that's what it's, we're trying to avoid that at all costs. Um, and we're trying to partner up with people that understand that. So it is, uh, you know, it is a, it's a fine line to number one, figure out how can we best, because for a lot of people, this is going to be their first interaction with Bitcoin that is outside of a uh, newspaper article or a magazine or a hit piece that they've seen on legacy media about Bitcoin mining being bad for the environment, right? We want to change the very first, the, the first narrative touch point to something positive, to something easy. Uh, our job is sort of to find what, how can we get people into the ecosystem um, on, a, on a positive note, like on a positive step? And how can we get those easy wins, which is, you know, stuff that we're doing on the ballpark or stuff that we're doing on the website or some of the media that Steve and I do. How can we show people that, number one, this isn't scary. This is not, you know, the narratives have changed from 2017. Uh, you know, things have moved a long, long way from that. 
but it requires uh, teaming up with the right people. And of course, there was a lot of interest, especially early on at the start, um, from uh, a couple of large companies you can imagine, um, the, the names of those companies that have, that have lots and lots of money and deep pockets. Uh, it, the, I think the Bitcoin-only companies and some of the Bitcoin-centric companies, they, they just may be smaller in size um, than those companies. And it, and it makes sense because they're not able to generate the revenue that happens uh, from some of the, you know, some of the, uh, let's say, non-Bitcoin uh, items that are there for exchanges and things like that. So it, it's about, it, we're, we're trying to stay um, in a very specific lane to show what can be done and how Bitcoin can be good for an organization like our own. So uh, for, for partnerships and sponsorships, obviously we are looking for support from the community. We would love to have uh, every sponsor be Bitcoin focused and Bitcoin oriented. And it's about raising those hands because we think this is an opportunity, right? This is not an opportunity to sponsor a Australian baseball team. This is the Bitcoin baseball team now, right? This is a, on a global scale uh, where this story will be uh, will be told around the world, right? We, we want to be much like uh, El Zante. The Bitcoin, Bitcoin beach has become a destination for Bitcoiners. Right? Well, that's exactly what we're doing at the ballpark. We are doing all in on Bitcoin, everything Bitcoin. All the companies should come. If you, have a, if you want to experiment in Bitcoin and you're a company, uh, talk to us because every weekend at the ballpark, we have not only educated people that are willing to reach out to first timers that, that come to the ballpark, uh, but you can have face-to-face -face interaction with people that have never heard of Bitcoin and they're going to get put down a certain path based on how we discuss it with them, based on how we intro it with them and your products. So we're Obviously, we're looking for companies that want access to something like that and that can see the value in the news story that's going to happen in the local media, in the national media, in the international media, outside of the Bitcoin community, inside of the Bitcoin community. It's about you know, taking, taking the narrative outside of Bitcoin Twitter uh, and introducing it to people through the Trojan horse of, hey, I, I really like baseball. <laughs> oh, you really like baseball. Okay, well, uh, also, well, you know, Bitcoin is going to change the world. There you go. Like, congratulations. You are now orange-pilled. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're certainly still looking for uh, some of those Bitcoin companies to, to sort of raise their hand and, and recognize the opportunity that we think that we are sort of just on the precipice of. I guess uh, one thing that comes to mind is, so we've spoken, of, well, we, we know why we believe in Bitcoin uh, here on the podcast. I think everyone sat here knows, right? Um, but when it comes to, uh, say, a sports organization, anywhere in the world or even just a general organization anywhere in the world that is listening to this and obviously okay they go well you know it takes um for you guys have taken like uh, having one someone specifically dedicated to the role for adopting bitcoin um and there are potential issues with accounting and all these different things but obviously there's the good sides what would you guys say have been like the i mean outside of the the, the most obvious i guess which is like international um fans and being able to accept international payments without pissing about with you know swift and, and other issues outside of those kind of two two sides of things what would you say like the the biggest what's made it what's been made easier by um becoming more bitcoin focused as a company and, and running on the bitcoin standard and then i guess follow up just to that is if there's other people out there listening or sports organizations listening you want to try and do this uh you guys have been through all the you know lots of pitfalls and and you know you know a lot basically compared to anyone else so would you guys ever be you know would you encourage someone to reach out to you guys or is there someone you'd say they, they should reach out to, to to kind of discuss that we're open 24 7 just like bitcoin so uh yes yeah, send us a dm um on, on twitter more, more than happy to chat to any sports organization the quicker we on board more teams uh yeah the better for for the bitcoin sports league the better for the network the better for the community uh you yeah, know the better for the globe um yeah but, Bitcoin's improved efficiencies you know, across the board and even just small wins. Yeah. We'll go back to yeah, with, with players. So we have international players that come to Perth that need to set up uh, an, an account to, for us to pay them in previously. Yeah? So they would look, uh, Google uh, Westpac branch, okay, go there. Uh, they realise it's an ATM. Oh, didn't realise, can't open an account. Then they'll go downtown, walk into a branch. The branch will say, oh, we need your mother's uh, original birth certificate it's like what the fuck for or to open an account with us so then they go back home uh the waste of the day walking around trying to f open a fee up bank account and then they've got training that night and then just not in the headspace because they've just been dicked around trying to open a bank account it takes them the best part of a week to open a bank account they finally do it they give us their details the bank account's different so who we bank with takes another four days before the transaction can be complete for the best part of their first two weeks in australia we can't pay them. And you know, the players just had a really, really bad experience. Um, yeah, again, look at lightning payments. If anyone's run a small business and you know, had a, 
point of sale system and you know, had had a transaction for even whether it's you know, a cup of coffee and it's uh, what, you know what's a cup of coffee five five dollars and they need to wait four days for it and then when the money finally comes into their account and they see that uh, the point of sale system is taking three percent off them you start calculating three percent on every transaction and compare it to the lightning network and then start multiplying that by one year on two years on three years in terms of your savings and suddenly you realize why you need to start operating on a bitcoin standard or making that first step to accepting bitcoin payments um you know, there's just all those little efficiencies that even if you took um yeah and, and looked at in isolation uh yeah there's good enough reason to make yeah make some sort of adjustment to the way your business operates yeah straight away just on those well the message here to all the other sports teams is like listen into what you just said you know, makes getting well, payments easier and yeah but it start today because you know this will be dictated by the players moving forward it's not you know perth eight dictating this within years players will be demanding that their organization pays them in bitcoin so the quicker you make the change the better your organization will be moving forward because you'll understand and you have the processes in place um obviously as time passes uh you know the education the playbooks will be out there for people to cut paste and follow but the quicker you can immerse yourself in this as an organization uh, the better you've got chance of a long-term success for your uh for, for your organization winning championships uh Pretty good time to buy at the moment, I would have thought. If you start hodling those coins, I think it's going to be a pretty good war chest uh, you know, in, in, in the future to, uh, to to continue you know, momentum as a championship winning team. And, and I would add to that, like, you know, we, we have gone on uh, during this podcast and um, in just some of the complexities that have come with, with operating on a Bitcoin standard, uh, you know, obviously not every organization is going to start like that. Uh, you don't have to. And now, although it seems complex to do a number of these things like paying players in Bitcoin and, and putting it on the balance sheet and things like that, it, it has never been easier, which is really a testament to the talent in the space. It's never been easier to just get started accepting Bitcoin payments. You know, if you can sign up for an email uh, as a business, you can start accepting Bitcoin. Uh, so it's, it, there really is no excuse there. And as soon as you do get that initial interest, Right. As soon as you just sign up, I'm going to take Bitcoin payments. Uh, as soon as you get that interest, that little bug, uh, you know, you start to put the pieces together and that just drives that uh, the want to figure out more and to learn more. And then that takes you deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. And, uh, you know, before you know it, you go from uh, signing up for that uh, Bitcoin payments provider to, you know, 12 months later, you are, uh, you know, you're going to be fully orange pilled. So uh, I would say to companies, businesses, big and small alike, uh, it's just it's never been easier to dip your toe in the water and sort of see what all the buzz is about because uh, you know you just need those sometimes you just need that the physicality of those early wins of just saying like i don't understand how the bitcoin payments work you know you've, i've heard it takes 10 minutes there's something about a block i got to do something with uh, magic internet numbers like i don't get it um or you could just have a lightning payment and have it instantly show up and uh, there's no sort of counterparty risk in there you you get your money instantly there's no way to charge it back or anything like that people get that like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that actually works better. Actually, that's quicker uh, than uh, what we were using before with the FPOS machine or the debit machine, or whatever it is. And those little wins, they start to stack up pretty quickly. You know, one great thing about Bitcoin is that you never stop learning. And, you know, you, you just always constantly need to stop to learn about Bitcoin. So, uh, you know, as an organization internally, do you regularly have this, like, let's say seminars, workshops where you, you know, always talk to your, your players, staff, about, you know, the best, you know, Bitcoin safety practices, you know, you know, obviously you can, boarding accidents, uh, you know, uh, you know, how to handle private keys, you know, how to, you know, the best wallets to use. You always have these conversations or do you have them on a case, let's say, you know, player comes to your staff, come up to you and say, hey, this is the problem I have. Or do you have this, do you constantly have these discussions based on maybe new things you learned, you know, just to keep them updated. And, you know, since you're now operating on the Bitcoin standard, obviously there has to be some kind of, you know, um, best Bitcoin press, you know, best practices, you know, you can suggest, you know, hey, don't keep your coins on exchanges or, you know, always, you know, take them, you know, put them on a custodial wallet. Do you have this, you know, conversations? Absolutely. The conversations don't stop. Uh, the conversations between Patrick and I don't stop, uh, you know, in, in terms of me uh, improving my knowledge. It, uh, you know, I don't think uh, we've even scratched the surface in some ways in terms of you know, the educational um, and we'll continue to you know, do that throughout uh, throughout our team and our players and our, our, our staff. And uh, it's it's important we provide that uh, that resource to them. 
Yeah. And, and I would just add to that. It, what What is really important is the same thing that we're doing, um, you know, that we're sort of outwardly projecting, uh, wanting to reflect the best of what Bitcoin has to offer and try and keep people at least what we think is uh, is the safest, best path forward in the most um, honest and transparent way that we can. Uh, we're trying to do that within the company as well, right? Steve, as the CEO of the company, you, your responsibility is the, the health of the organization. Um, and it does us no good, no no services, no, no, no uh, nothing good comes from someone inside of the organization having a bad experience. Um, and we understand that for a, a lot of the people uh, in the organization, this is the first, uh, initially when we had these conversations and they were learning these things, that this is their first exposure to this. And it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, and they need to learn this so that they can build convictions so that when moments like this happen, that they that they are happy with uh, the decisions that they've made and the the security that they have taken. So I would say it's it's been paramount inside of the organization to make sure that we are high on education and that it is presented in a way that isn't overwhelming. You know, going back to that, really the translation part or the translator part of being a chief Bitcoin officer is making sure that you are reaching the audience where they are, you know, really speaking to them as to what level they are operating to. Like you're not going to lead with uh, being a sovereign individual and not having the government uh, confiscate your funds, right? Like that's not what was problem number one inside of the organization day one. It was like, okay, I'm going to get paid. I don't understand how I, how do I get, how do I get the things, <laughs> you know, like, how do I, how do I get the coins? It's like, okay, no, that's not, it's not really coins. Uh, that's just the name. It's like the, those things and, and having those conversations, you have to have the ability to recognize all of the different levels and be prepared to not dumb it down, but make it as simple as possible and as easily uh, digestible uh, as possible. And that will never stop. Like, of course, we are developing best practices inside of the organization for people that are new. Um, and every year, like we said, how things are going to be different 30 days from now, 90 days from now. Uh, the next year after this initial season um, has, has finally come and passed um, and the players have gone through this entire process of onboarding, we're going to have a much clearer picture. In, in 2023, <laughs> we are going to be streamlined like you wouldn't believe because we will have gone through all of these things and had all these discussions um, and seen the problems that arise and come up with the best practices. And, you know, that's what we've done even in the small business world. Like, you know, you mentioned teams reaching out and getting in touch with us. Like we are constantly uh, in these meetings with companies that have these questions um, and we're developing behind the scenes our own sort of handbook, our own playbook as to what do you do? Uh, if you're a certain size organization and maybe you don't have access to all the resources that larger companies do, uh, what are some of the paths that you can take and what are some of the pitfalls that you can avoid that we have gone through? Because it's like, what's the point of us doing the work if we're just going to uh, shelter it for ourselves and just keep it here and, and not let anybody see so we can get uh, somehow get ahead of the competition? It's like, no, the, we want the, 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 the rising tide to lift all boats, right? It's like, we've done the work. You shouldn't have to now. It's like you should at least be able to avoid this so that you can help us, right? We want to get everybody up to speed as quick as possible so that the best idea wins. Like we don't want people left behind uh, thinking that, you know, they're not going to get as good of the ideas that we had because we put in the, the work or the research. It's like, no, that, that work is done. Now make it available, right? Be as transparent as we possibly can be. Uh, so the education is just uh, is, is paramount and, and, and hopefully will never stop. I'm sold. If I, if I had a sports team, I'd be, uh, I'd be setting up a separate call with you boys. So it's, uh, I think you've done a good job as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, you've done a good job in, uh, in, yeah, I think in, in presenting the realities of the situation, like, yeah, there's some things you've got to work out and, and if you want to go full, full way, but also like you can just dip your toe quite easily and kind of take it from there. And, and once you do that, you'll, you'll begin to understand the value more and more as well of, of that um i think really yeah especially as you said like international play if you're bringing international players in you've got international fans those two things you can massively increase just by accepting bitcoin um because it makes life so much easier uh it's like when I, you know if you go to el salvador and you get there and you actually realize oh well i don't really need any you know, any real dollars or anything i just kind of rock up with my phone and just go beep beep and just pay for everything and it just makes life so much more easy so um yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's awesome. Um, I did have one question. I know you guys are super focused on Bitcoin, but do you accept any other cryptos or stable coins or anything like that, or is it Bitcoin only? We're the Bitcoin baseball team. We're not a shit coin sports team. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Bitcoin, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. That's uh well that's a, I think that's a pretty good note to end on to be honest um but yeah well I say I appreciate you guys coming on it's been really interesting it's been very different for our, our conversations to like talk to a sports team an organization that's going through really like full on adopting 
uh, Bitcoin uh, in every aspect of the business. So it's been fascinating for me, uh, for sure. And I'm sure it has been for all the listeners. Uh, do you guys, is there anything you want to, well, I mean, is there anything you want to plug before we, we head out? Or is there anywhere people can get hold of you guys, What where they should be following you? Let, let everyone know. Yeah, absolutely. All, all, all the uh, the regular channels. So our, our website, which is perfect.com.au, and there's a, a tab at the top which uh, has Bitcoin and leads you through to some of our uh, our Bitcoin pages. Obviously, on on Twitter at that Perfect. Um, we're actually running a competition at the moment, uh, you know, globally for fans or the network to design our Bitcoin jersey for this season. Um, and that competition actually closes next week. So if you've got a couple of design skills and you're good with some crayons or a uh, or a texter, uh, get designing. We'd love. We'd, yeah. There, there, there are no rules for this competition. Um, it's pretty simple. What's your interpretation of the uh, of, of the Bitcoin baseball team, and what would you like to see? A jersey? Uh, put something you know, on on paper and send it through to us. So uh, you can find those links through the website. Um, and yeah, continue to to, to support us uh, throughout the course of the season. There's a fair bit of pressure on us now, um, you know, to win the championship. As we know, Bitcoin always wins, and the Bitcoin baseball team can't finish second. So uh, yeah, we. we we're geared up for a championship season and looking forward to it. So thanks for your interest in the story. Thanks for chatting to us. We'd also like to congratulate yourselves and bit refill on the other wonderful work you've pioneered throughout the uh, you know, over the years as well. And that's been awesome to follow as well. So uh, we'd like to thank everyone for their support. I was going to ask how to get my hands on a jersey, but it sounds like I should wait until the contest is over. Uh, now we've, we've certainly got jerseys uh, on, online at the moment, uh, which you can uh, you can purchase, uh, but or you can just yeah, d- design your own. I'd love to see one coming uh, from yourself in, in, the, in the coming days. Uh, let's see what you've got uh, in the uh, in the design space and uh, bring something together or bring something to life for us. That'd be awesome. If it's down to me, it's going to be a stick man uh, t-shirt probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> like Bitcoin wizard. MS Paint, yeah, <laughs> just shove the Bitcoin wizard on there. Uh, That's it. That's it. it becomes <laughs> iconic. Like, Design done. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, no, thanks guys for coming. It's been, it's been, yeah, it's been great. Honestly, I've really enjoyed it, and it's been great to meet you guys. Um, and if I'm ever in Australia on the other side of the world, then I, I need to drop by. Uh, it'd be cool to make a pilgrimage just to head over and watch a game and, and and kind of talk to people and use Bitcoin and get a jersey. So hopefully, I can add that to my bucket list. Um, but yeah, uh, everyone out there listening, we hope you've had an awesome time as well, uh, and I hope that you guys have an awesome day, week, month, year. Keep being happy, keep loving life, keep supporting Perth Heat uh, and keep buying Bitcoin. And we'll see you all soon. Take care.